yeah. though, because I'm a danger yeah. on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you a danger on the highway? I'm like that old lady holding the cardboard. <laughs> board. I'm just kind of distracted, and oh. I don't want to be, but yeah. things distract me, and uh-huh. I just figured I was a danger on the highway. Okay. So I need to get off. So have you got big plans? No, just after? me and my kitty. Okay. No. But I have to. I have to keep her. You're not going on any well. big trips, or oh no, I don't. Going to Arkansas, or no, no, Austin. I don't, I don't like to fly, and I can't drive out on anywhere. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Well, you can take you can take Amtrak. That's a train. Yeah. But you have to drive to get there. Not necessarily. Somebody could drive you and drop you off. There's it up in Houston. There's taxis and yeah. Uber. Things like that. So. <laughs> Too long. Good exercise. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got the wheel up there. Yeah. Just take a walk. Walk. Just a sec. I'll be fine. I'll find something. Find something, huh? Okay. I will. Kitty and I will. All right. Well, today is uh, the 27th. Mm-hmm. Oh, this I, was it this morning? No, I guess it was last night. I checked the, our video from last week mm-hmm. from our Sunday school class and had 17 views. So. Wow, 17? Yeah. yeah. That's a right. Nice, I, I think, I mean, you know, now that we've got Lois centered in the video, it's... No. Really, that's it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just drawing people in by droves. No. <laughs> Our class don't pay attention to him, though. I am not. <laughs> don't pay attention. I am Our just class not. videos get way more views than my bike riding videos do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to do something exciting when you're riding your bike. Like, can you point out animals or? I'm, I sometimes I do that. Like mm-hmm. yesterday, I on Saturdays. I always I go to the same route down Kingwood, <clears throat> down through Atascocita, and then take I nine, mm-hmm. FM 1960 East because on Saturdays other bikers are out. So yesterday I, I videoed the other bikers. They're coming back as I'm going out. Oh, so that's I think funny. they started Bike Barn there at Westlake Houston Parkway in 1960, and they go down through Summerwood and. <clears throat> Uh, Dusen Park and Eisenhower, well they don't go to Eisenhower, but they go past Eisenhower Park and then down through Crosby and then up through the grass farms and then back uh, that way. Mm-hmm. So someday I'll get up early enough to go start with them. I was, that was my next question, why don't you join them? Because they start way early. <laughs> I just get up, go to bed early and then get up early. Oh, okay. So that's how it works, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm not a late sleeper, but I don't know. It's, I just have, yesterday, I, for me it was early. I was out, I left the house at 25 after 8. And, uh, well, it can be done, because like when I went to Mesquite, I was at the bike race start at 7.30. So yeah. Actually, it was before that. It was like 6, 7 o'clock, so... It can be done, mm-hmm. but I guess I'm not oomphed enough to get there. So. <laughs> that extra hour of sleep. <laughs> Plus, I was watching the Tour de France stage one. Well, I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. So, but I put it on pause and went <laughs> biking, and then came back and watched it. So, same thing as I did this morning. I was eating breakfast and watching stage two. And uh, at about 111 kilometers to go, I put it on pause, and when I go home, I'll start watching. Is it, how much longer will it be on? Well, 111, you mean overall? Uh-huh. There, well, there's 21 stages. It will end, uh, whatever, let's see here, the 4th, the 11th, the 18th, I believe, of, uh, of July. That's a long time. Yeah, 21 stages. There's two rest days. Mm. So. All right. If you participate in it, do you have to go through all the stages? You have to do all of them. Of course You're going to be on the, if you have want to entertain the chance of being on the podium. Mm-hmm. You have to go through all. You, there's, 
you got to finish. Okay. There was this devotion mm. uh, I was reading in the upper room the other day. I even sent it to Kim, my daughter. And uh, there was this guy from uh, Africa, and he went to the, I think it was the 1984 Olympics, and he was running the 5,000-kilometer race. And he started out, and along the route, uh, the course, he fell, and he dislocated his shoulder and had cuts on his uh, forearm. And, but he got up and continued running. It took, he, he finished an hour later than everybody else because of that. Mm -hmm. And this reporter asked him, well, how, how come you didn't quit at that? He says, well, my country didn't send me to this race to start. They sent me to this race to finish. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, mm -hmm. the scripture that day was about Paul when he, when he was talking about finishing the race. So, but I, that mm -hmm. that guy, That's courageous. Uh, he was correct. His country didn't mm -hmm. send him there to start; they sent him to finish. Yeah. And finish he did. It was not easy. Just like those guys mm -hmm. yesterday in that crash. Mm -hmm. I, I had seen piles of bikes there. They I don't know if you if they showed it, but there was this one bike where the back end of it was broken too. Oh my goodness! It was a carbon oh. fiber bikes, which are are. And crashes are fairly fragile uh, compared to steel. Okay, this is uh, a question about legality. The woman who held the sign out that cost, is she responsible for uh, invading their space or is there any well, legal? Well, the French Jarmadons are hunting for her because she ran away. Oh, that makes it even worse. Yep. And the uh, ASO, which is the organization that puts on the Tour de France, is suing her once they can find her. That answers my question. Yeah. I figured she had to be liable. Yeah. Yeah, the sign, I don't speak French, don't read French. One of the commentators this morning said the sign didn't even make sense what it said on it. They, got, they haven't even figured out what the sign said. Mm -hmm. It might be some code or something. So, well. <clears throat> so, we're on page 78. Is mm -hmm. that correct, Lois? Mm -hmm. Number 8. Number 8. Good, good. Okay, mm -hmm. that's I, I thought it was. That, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, we might even have a shot. I don't know what time it is here. No, we're not going to. Well, maybe we will. Depends on how, how gabby we are <laughs> of uh, finishing the, this lesson and moving on to the other. Because we we got a few here. But they're kind of long questions. So, uh, Or they can be. So uh, let's open with a word of prayer, and then we'll del dive into what uh, we're still in profit and loss, believe it or not. Father, thank you for this time. We come together to study your word in Philippians and Paul's instructions and exhortations to the Philippians and in turn to us too as it's come down through all these years. Help us to uh, read these words, learn from them, and put them into practice and be your faithful servants. Amen. Amen. And I also lift up those that aren't with us today. <clears throat> and, and also those in Florida. In oh, that yeah. horrible crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, so I don't sad. know if you read or heard about it, but this, this condo back in 2018, mm -hmm. an engineer came out and said that they needed mm -hmm. to yeah. do some repairs. And the repairs were supposed to start this week. They waited too long. Mm -hmm. One week too long. Mm -hmm. But it, this, uh, apparently they, the owners of the property or people in charge <coughs> didn't think it was serious enough that they evacu or, you know, no, closed the building and didn't have people in it. But apparently it was very fragile. Isn't there a second building close by? Mm -hmm. Right beside it. There's one that just like just it right beside it. Yeah. It's, uh, the aerial shots show there's two of them mm -hmm. side by side. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're connected though. Well, I thought that one that was. Oh, okay. Maybe, well, I'm not sure. Maybe it was. You know, but it's it was close enough to where they, I think they have told the people to Leave. please evacuate. Yeah. yeah. And now, of course, you know, now that the horse is out of the barn, uh, the city of Miami, well, actually, Miami-Dade. Uh, Miami-Dade, I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're, they're one of those... Uh, 
entities around the country where the city and the county have unified and it's one one and the same. That's why they call it Miami Dade. Hmm. Um, okay. I didn't know that. Jacksonville, Florida is another town where the county and the city merged. Hmm. So they have one government. Anyway, so now that you've had your civics lesson, uh, you know, do they even teach civics anymore? <clears throat> I don't think they do, no. which is a shame, even yeah. though I hated it when I took it. Yeah. I'm glad I had it. Yeah. It was tough. Yeah, it, it's, it teaches about government. And, yes, it does. And, uh, and the legislature, all the branches of government and how they inter <clears throat> interact with each other and uh -huh. the power structure and... Um, yep. Just everything we need to know about our country. Yeah, how it operates or yes. why why it operates yes. the way it does. Um, <coughs> so yep, yep, that would be. I think that's important information. Apparently, uh, well, our school system seems to have difficulties. <coughs> I'm not. When I was in college, I read this book called Radical. Uh, radical economics. And, uh, uh, it, was, it was written by a, 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 a person. We don't really know who he, who he or she was, but his, the name was Angus Black. And he, he wrote, mm -hmm. or the author wrote about these various things. One that he wrote about was education. And this was back in the, in the 60s. Mm -hmm. He was writing, the author, say he, I don't know if it's a he or a she, but the author wrote about how public education, uh, his, his, uh, the, or his thoughts on it was that we should do away with public education and it should be uh, run by private entities because public education has, has no incentive to improve. They're, they're, it's all about the status quo. And uh, so there's one of the beauties of the capitalistic system uh, is that it purges itself as entities, organizations become uh, non-productive or inefficient, they're flushed out of the system. Mm -hmm. And But in education we don't have that. It doesn't get flushed out when, when there's people teachers, administrators, uh, when they're inefficient, they just keep on going. That's why they have those, uh, some of those unions protecting yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. Did you belong to the union when you? Mm-mm, okay. I didn't like them. Yeah, okay. That's they good. were too liberal. Well, they haven't <laughs> gotten any better. No, they <laughs> haven't. <laughs> I still don't like them either. Still haven't gotten any better. Okay, well, mm -hmm. now that I've, uh, Digressed. Digressed. I, now, I have to tell the story about this book. I brought, I brought that book home from college. I would come home each weekend. And my uh, then wife, uh, her mother saw me, or saw that I had this book I was talking about. And she said, she got real upset because it had the word radical in it, radical economics. Well, there's two, two flavors of radical. You can be radical right, radical left. Mm -hmm. Things like that. So, uh, mm -hmm. she she assumed that it meant that I was. Uh, of course, back in the '60s, it was the flower child, hippies, mm -hmm. and uh, things like that. <coughs> but I wasn't that that direction. So, fortunately, at that time, the university that I went to, the University of Cincinnati, uh, was very conservative. <laughs> I can't know. I don't know that I could say that today. So. Probably. Probably not. Well, anyway, on to question eight here. Make a list of what is valuable in verse, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, 18, 23 through 26, chapter 2, 2 through 4, and verse 17. And what is relatively unimportant? And it gives okay. uh, chapter 1, 12 through 18, 23 through 24, 3, 4 through 8, 4, 11 through 13 to Paul. So, uh, what, what did you find that was valuable in, in those verses. Did you find anything valuable? 
First off, I thought, I, just as an overall thing, I found it valuable that Paul took the time and energy to write this down so that we could talk about it a couple thousand years later. That now, is true. That, that's important. Mm -hmm. And then, so, okay. Anybody have a list that they want to share? Just, just a few. Okay, well, okay. share them, uh, please. Being sincere, uh -huh. loving the words of Christ, Okay. Do not offend the word, preaching Christ, staying with God's, I mean, soon, yes, helping God's children grow in faith. Very good. Wow. Okay. All right. Anybody else have a list? Okay. That you would Love, fruits of righteousness, that Christ is preached, to be with Christ, joy of faith, caring for others, sacrifice, rejoicing in the free grace of God. All right. Okay. All right. Well, he, here's what I had, and some of them overlap with yours. Uh, love overflowing, pure and blameless, Christ, Christ, Christ proclaimed, duh. and uh, be with Christ, be in full accord and one mind, look out for the interest of others, and offering faith. Now we go for the for the biggie bad here, relatively unimportant. What what did you find that was relatively unimportant to Paul? Well, you know, he was in chains and the guard was watching him. That did not bother him at all, being in chains mm -hmm. and having the guard constantly there. And uh, what is also an important, unimportant to him was those who preach for Christ for selfish ambition and not the truth, not the faith, not the reality of who Christ is. Yeah. Yeah, I think as long as Christ proclaimed, he he was great was okay. with that. Yeah. He, he didn't he didn't like that the people did it there are reasons for doing it, mm -hmm. but he did like or thought it was important that they were preaching. Christ proclaimed was better than not being proclaimed at all, even though the motive was wrong or questionable on that. So, okay. Anybody else for the relatively unimportant? Well, I, I had a little bit uh, different take on it. Okay. Uh, relatively unimportant. The uh, thing I got out of that overall list of scriptures is to uh, what's uh, it's unimportant what has happened to you. You let Jesus repair the cracks. <laughs> yeah. And for the sake of the gospel, take your criticism and stride and keep preaching the gospel for Jesus is crucified. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yeah. Well, what I put down for relatively unimportant is some of these I have four here. I said imprisonment. Okay. Mm -hmm. that Paul he wasn't happy about being there, but it wasn't. Uh, actually, he says that it presented circumstances that he wouldn't have had otherwise. He, he wouldn't have had the he probably would not have had the opportunity to witness to the people that he witnessed to if he hadn't been in prison because he wouldn't have come in contact with the guards and anybody else that's coming along that connected to that. You know, Rick, there's a, uh, what, what Paul is saying there is uh, so important that the, the opportunity, he took advantage of his opportunities. Mm -hmm. When I was in the hospital, I was upset at camp for the first three or four days. Yeah. I mean, really upset. But anyway, I had opportunity there. Uh, when I realized I wasn't going anywhere except right there flat on my back, mm -hmm. that uh, I actually uh, helped a couple of the nurses who had been sort of quiet and hadn't been so mean to me, and uh, <laughs> led them to accept Jesus as Savior. And then over in the uh, rehab place, uh, I got to pray for almost everybody who came in my room. Oh. Good. Because they, they, they all said, well, you're, you're up today. Well, I knew I was getting better. I was getting closer to getting out of that, that place. Mm -hmm. And so I said, uh, it ain't bothering you. I'd be glad to pray for you. Just real simple. Well, yeah, I got this. And I just, they all just came in. And uh, one of them asked, he said, you, you the fellow that prays for everybody? I said, well, if you want it, I'm not going to push that all on anybody, but I think it's, it's important. Mm -hmm. 
And if I had been there, I would never seen these people. Yeah, yeah, your paths probably would not have crossed. Yep. Yeah, there, there was a guy that I every Tuesday night I play dominoes with uh, people from Hazel's Church, and uh, one of the guys there, Lewis, he he went to Northeast Memorial Herman uh, for COVID, and from time to time, not every week, but from time to time when this subject comes up, he talks about how bad it was, how bad they treated him, and I, you know, and how how the staff was, and I, I wasn't there for that, but I was there in August for my uh, abdominal blockage, and I didn't have that experience. My, my experience was positive mm -hmm. uh, on that, but so I don't know, maybe the, wherever the COVID people were, the, they put the, the meanies, I don't know. Well, the, the, the thing that just, it just upsets me about this, this, I guess this new degree that you get from medical school being a hospitalist. Uh-huh. You don't know nothing about anything, you just know a little bit about everything. Uh-huh. And if it's, uh, I had 14 different doctors look on me in 13 days. No. Yeah. 14. 14. Every day there's somebody new. Finally, her immunologist came in one day, and he was like a bulldog. He came in very quiet, but I could tell he was anxious to find out what was going on with me. And he'd go out there and he'd talk to some people, and he'd come back the next day or maybe the day after. Uh -huh. I highest regard for that guy. To keep, and he's taking me on as a new client with him. Uh-huh. Uh, now, and I just think he's marvelous. Yeah. He's immunologist. Very Pul good. Pulmonologist. Pulmonologist. Yeah. Not yeah. an immunologist. One of those ologists. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, not, he's one of those ologists. <laughs> ologists. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Zoologist. No, I'm. <laughs> yeah. One of the nurses asked me, said, how many specialists do you see? And I had stopped thinking. I think it was seven or eight. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. unreal. Yeah. You would think just one. Well, mm -hmm. that was, I get. maybe mm -hmm. it was a learning I don't know, but well, yeah, well, that's it, it, some of them pretty old to be learners. Oh yeah, they better have been accomplished by now. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. You so should, anyway, you should always yeah. be learning. That's like my mm -hmm. the dentist that I go to. He's he's kind of semi-retired now, but uh, Richard Roundtree. Oh, I go to him. Do you? I've been going to him for years and years and years. Yeah, Love thirty. I've, we've, For thirty, forty years. Yeah, mm -hmm. at least forty years. Well, mm -hmm. he's semi-retired now, but he's still. He still goes to, uh, even though he's semi-retired, he still goes to, he does. to learn. I'm sure it was. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. My vet does that. Yeah. He goes to class a half a day and spends the next six and a half with his wife in the mountains of Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh -huh. do you? but he still goes to those conferences. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, okay, let's move on to question nine, Hal. Okay. Now we've... Uh, Discussed our healthcare system somewhat. <laughs> and dentists. <laughs> <laughs> and dentists, yeah. And ologists, whatever. Ologist. Uh, all ologist. The <laughs> <laughs> okay, question nine says In what ways might adopting Paul's value system affect the way you live? Okay, so if we adopted Paul's value system, which we, we pointed out some things here, things that are valuable to him, that's part of the value system, and then some of the things that aren't valuable to him or weren't that important uh, so in what ways might adopting Paul's value system affect the way you live you would not focus so much on your own comfort or what you think you need for comfort and you would focus more on the words of life and uh, that would affect what you need in your life you don't need all of these things yeah. but you need the word your heart really? and your yeah. soul. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the, Paul in Philippians and other other of his letters as well, mm -hmm. he's, he does not focus on his circumstances. His circumstances mm -hmm. from time to time are pretty rough, but he focuses on what God, what he's there to do, his mission. What is his mission to bring the gospel? Well, he wanted to bring it to the Jews, but they, they rejected him. So when they happened, some people that that would have been the end right there, but Paul sh just shifts focus and he says, "Okay, the Jews don't want to hear it. I'm going to go to the Gentiles," and apparently they were receptive, many of them, 
some weren't, but some, many were. Let's see, did we do this uh, uh, thought discussion on the left-hand column? I think we did. Paul's, what does mm -hmm. Paul mean that <coughs> Christian must literally give up everything mm -hmm. for Christ? I think we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I thought we did. Okay, let's jump over here to question 10. In order to gain Christ and be found in him, that's chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. What does Paul want? That'd be chapter 3, verse 10 through 11. So let's, uh, um, and that would be in Philippians, of course. Chapter 3, 8 and 9. So we see here in chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain, gain Christ, and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ. Okay, so uh, there, that's the gain. In, uh, in order to gain Christ be, and be found in him, that's, that's where we're talking about. What does Paul want in 10 through 11? So, okay, uh, 10 and 11 says, I want to know Christ, okay? I think that's, that's our first answer there. What does Paul want? I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. So he wants to know the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. So, we see here he wants to know Christ, the power of the resurrection. He wants to share his sufferings. Mm -hmm. And then <coughs> he wants to be resurrected from the dead. Any, any, everybody agree with those? Yeah, that's what I put. That's what you put down. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I followed along. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here comes the next two. The next two are toughies. Yeah. Number 11, it says here, why can't Paul experience Christ's resurrection without sharing his suffering and death? So, and then it gives us some optional things, scriptures here. Uh, did you look up, everybody look up those scriptures? Some. I did Luke, but I forgot what it said. Okay. But I did do it. Okay. Well, okay, may, let's answer or try to answer, why can't Paul experience Christ's resurrection without sharing his suffering and death? Well, I don't think you could experience the resurrection if you don't go you the complete... Yeah, you have to go through the process. The complete steps that Christ did. You have to understand... Mm -hmm. The denial of self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, though it would be like doing part of it, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know... Like making, making a cake and only using half of the ingredients. Oh my goodness. That, that probably would not turn out to be a very good cake. Unless it was a mud cake. So. Uh, it's that rabbit trail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was cute. Yep. Yep. So, uh, okay. So, uh, th these optional uh, scriptures. Like Luke 9, 22 through 26, I put down here just a short little thing here. It says, deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow mm -hmm. Christ. So that was that part there. Then John 12, 23 through 26 was glorify Christ to bear fruit, lose my life in the world. So that, that's where Jesus talked to the disciples about uh, losing your life. Those that, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of the way that he phrased it. Yeah, those people that, uh, gained their life in the world, lost their mm -hmm. life eternally because they were focused on the world. All right, Romans 6, 5 through 10. Die, old self, and sin no more. Die to your old self and sin no more. Then 2 Corinthians 4, 7, 7, yeah, 7 through 18. Death of Jesus and life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then Hebrews seven or 5, 7 through 9. Jesus obeyed those suffered. Even though obeying in in meant suffering, he, he the mission, his purpose, his obedience to God 
for, outweighed the suffering that he was that he had or endured. This is, this is the right. Mm -hmm. Okay, number twelve. Oh well, did anybody have anything else? No, 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 no let me monopoli um, monopolize <clears throat> here. I just put it into one thought for me. Okay. And we lose the world by death but we gain eternal life through Jesus. Okay, yeah. I think that was that was what Paul was trying to get across uh, to there. Uh, we won't experience a resurrection if we don't accept Christ's mm -hmm. resurrection and re his reconciliation that he brought through his suffering and death. Well, number 12, how does Philippians show Paul and others identifying with Christ in all aspects of his servanthood, death, and resurrection? And it points out a number of verses here, all mm -hmm. in Philippians, of course. Um, so, anybody have that answer? Do those answers? Mm -hmm. I didn't do that one. You didn't do that one? Well, I ran out of time, kind of. Kind of? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lois. Wheel of Fortune was coming on. <laughs> <laughs> I love Wheel your of, honesty. Can Wheel you know, of Fortune. Always watch Wheel of Fortune. Vanna. Vanna and what's his name? Yes. Pat Sajak. Pat, Pat, Pat Sajak. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are they reruns or are they still new? They're both. both. I mean, okay. some are reruns and uh, some are new. Saturday nights, they're always reruns because mm -hmm. they don't wear a yeah. mask and no social distancing. <clears throat> oh, okay. That's how you can tell. New, newer from older. <laughs> well, how they do the wheel. Yes. Yeah. And even if I've seen the, the puzzles before, I can't remember what the answers are. Oh, yeah. Are. I can't either. Yeah, two I nights before, and I, I haven't watched <laughs> Wheel of Fortune in forever. I haven't got, forever. I've gotten only two, maybe. Yeah. In all the years I've watched it, I just <laughs> can't get it. <laughs> uh, well, at least you're, you're honest there. Okay, <laughs> Lois. Okay, well, number 12. Here's what yeah. I come up with in Philippians 1. 8, 12 through 14, I said, though in prison, Paul witnesses to all. So he was telling the Philippians, he, don't, your circumstances do not necessarily over, override your ability to witness. Even though some people would have thought, you know, I'm in prison, I can't witness. Paul said, no, I can witness. And believe it or not, these guys can't leave me either. So uh, it goes on. Okay, verses 18 through 30, Paul rejoices despite his circumstances, so he continues on that. Chapter 2, 1 through 8, full accord, one mind, not selfish, but serving. We get back to that. Do you know which kind of car the disciples rode in? Honda Accord. Honda Accord, I think. Because they were in all one accord. One accord. Of course. <laughs> it was only a rather large one. <laughs> I told that was that. the year they had the inflated pricing. Yeah, the inflated mm -hmm. pricing, yeah, that's right. Okay, chapter 2, verse 17. Paul is a libation over their sacrifice and faith. If you remember that, he poured, he wanted to be a libation. What's a libation? Is it an offering? An offering. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like the oil over Aaron when he was anointed mm -hmm. uh, a priest. Okay, chapter two, uh, uh, chapter two, verses twenty through thirty. Timothy is an example, and Ephroditus mm -hmm. was the messenger. So he uh, uh, he identified these two: Timothy uh, and Ephroditus. Uh, how they served. Okay, chapter three, verses four through seven. Paul warns of false teachers and doctrine. Mm -hmm. He wants them to be aware that. You know, not everybody that comes uh, bearing words are worthy of listening to. You've got to be on your guard. Don't let your guard down. And then 20 through 21, citizens of heaven, source of our, source of our Savior. Jesus transforms humili humiliation into, gl into glory. So the cross was thought of as humiliation, mm -hmm. but in it, for Christ it was actually turned into glory. So, all right, optional application here on the right-hand column. How could you grow to know Christ more intimately? Part A, ask God to nurture you in you a desire 
to know Christ that outweighs every other desire. Plan to pray about this daily. Okay, there's a, a step that we can do. Turn the TV off when the Wheel of Fortune comes on. You mean not watch Wheel of Fortune? You can't record it and watch it later? I don't know how. Yeah. Oh. Well, you, need, you could expand your knowledge. I know. Both ways. One on how to record. And I don't uh, no, I'm, I don't know how to do it. Two that. You don't have a VCR that the clock's flashing, do you? I don't think so. Okay. But there's something that's flashing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm bad with technology. I had one like that one day, but it had a red light attached to it. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> flashing red light. Uh, flashing something. Yep. Did somebody get out of the car and visit you shortly? They did, and uh, I was totally surprised. It's Patton Village, believe this or not. Oh, yeah? Oh, because I was speeding over the middle of the bridge. Oh. That's a no-no up there. Oh, gosh. Yeah, Patton Village has, has a reputation for, oh well, they used to have for speed traps. I think mm -hmm. they still do, uh, until the state legislature decided that when they collect fines, the city only gets to keep a little tiny portion of it. So uh, mm. that that deterred, yep. cut down, supposedly cut down on the number mm -hmm. of that. But uh. that young fellow uh, said, could I see your license and your insurance? And says, yes, sir. And he explained, you know, halfway through, the speed limit stopped. And, I said, well, I, uh, I've driven over this bridge a thousand times probably, and I guess I did not respond to that. He said, I'll be back to you. I thought, yes, sir. So he comes back to the car and says, how long have you been driving? I said, well, we got a runner's permit and I was 14. He says, you don't have a record of any ticket ever been on your driver's license. I said, no, sir. He said, well, I'm not going to be the first one to ever do it. Slow down. Have a nice day, sir. <laughs> oh my gosh, how nice. Uh, and he followed you home. <laughs> he didn't. Oh, he I had another one follow me home one oh, night. Yeah. <laughs> it was a highway patrolman. Uh, Mary, you got to be careful. I, I, I couldn't say that record because in 1970 in Bel Air, Ohio, I, for work, I, was, I went mm -hmm. from work to Bel Air, Ohio to pick up something for for where I worked. And I was going down Main Street of Bel Air, Ohio, and the street that I needed to turn on mm -hmm. was coming up, and I made a left turn. And as no sooner did I make that left turn, and boy, here comes the policeman with the lights flashing. Mm -hmm. Pulled me over and said, do you know that you made an illegal left-hand turn? And I said, no, I didn't. Probably if I would have known that, I wouldn't have done it. But, uh, so yeah, that's there's a sign there. Well, I didn't believe him. So I, after he got gave me the ticket, I went back, and there was a sign. It was an old rusted out sign that you could barely read, hung over on the light pole. That you, if you were turning left, you would think they'd put it over here, right, where you could see it. Well, no, it was over here on the right, and it was behind a, a limb, mm -hmm. and the sign was so rusted. <clears throat> so anyway, I got that. That was a fr up until mm -hmm. August of 2017. That was the only ticket I ever had. So in August of 2017, mm -hmm. I pulled out in front of a guy on the crossing Loop 494 and got crashed into. So whoops. Yeah, whoops. And it, mm -hmm. it's it's I I know I've told you this, but the guy that was driving the car that hit me was mm -hmm. Stan Kessler. He played the music at when Hazel and I got married. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I didn't want to run into him that way. <laughs> no, I guess you didn't. Uh, he got out of the car and I said, Stan, is that you? <laughs> we hadn't seen each other probably in 10 or 15 years. <laughs> so now, the same group that I go to on Tuesday night to play mm -hmm. Mexican train dominoes, one of the guys that comes there is uh, Jim Houck. And apparently, he goes by at Stan's house, and on Tuesday, Stan bakes a cake. And so he brings, Jim brings this cake. And it's one of the desserts that we have. <laughs> so, but every, apparently Stan has, has uh, uh, I think it's cancer. And so he's, he's had some treatment and he's not gonna be able to drive for a long time, so. 
he's he's had a number of issues through his life. Mm. So anyway, okay, part B here is to know Christ better. Meditate daily on chapter 2, verses 6 through 11, or other passages such as. Um, so do we, you know, what's, meditate daily. What's, when you meditate, what, what action, what does that mean? It could be just taking time to pray or to quietly read and think about. Meditate means to think. Cogitate. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay. I would use the word focus. Focus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, C, study Jesus' character in one of the Gospels. Actually, you could use them all. Study mm -hmm. Jesus' character. You know, if we're going to know Jesus, we should, should uh, study him, understand him. And then D, what obstacles hinder you from willingly sharing in Christ's sufferings? What encourages you to do this? How would you do this more fully this week? I've been this week. I started watching this old TV series. I don't know if you remembered or if you even heard of it. Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. Remember Hawkeye? And Chingachgook. Who's in it? I don't know who the actors are. Well, I do know one actor. The late one of the ladies or the the lady co-star mm -hmm. is Linda Carter. She's okay, I remember. she's played Wonder Woman. Yeah, I remember her. And so she's in it. But uh, I, I started watching this okay. reruns. Obviously, mm -hmm. it was it was created in 1994, so it's you know it's not spring chicken. But uh, so there there this takes place in 1755 in the northern part of New York State of New York. Well, by then it wasn't a state then, but a colony, New York, and it's it's. The French and the English are fighting over who will have, who will own this territory. So Hawkeye mm -hmm. is, is, is centered around that. And the, there, he's he's at a fort, in northern New York, and the French are in the episode I watched last night. The French are bombarding it. Well, it's interesting. Each side has cannons, but. They've each positioned their cannon to where it's just out of range. Hmm. The, the English cannons shoot far enough that the French cannon, when they shoot back, it just hits on the outside at the foot of the fort wall, but not the wall itself. <laughs> so it's kind of a, a standoff. Well, the French are, are, they have the answer to this. Okay, the cannons are eight pounders. That's how they define them. They shoot an eight pound cannonball. Well, the French have decided that they're going to end this, so they, they're importing, hauling this 32-pound cannon from up what today is Canada. Some, they're hauling it down there. So Hawkeye and Chingus Cook and, and uh, Mrs. Shields, Elizabeth Shields, they, they go out to try to intercept this cannon, and uh, they, they intercept it, and they tricked the French troops. Mrs. Shields goes over here and <laughs> Hawkeye and Chingus Cook says, you know, how are we going to create a distraction? And uh, Mrs. Shields says, well, I can do that. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> so she goes over there and, and distracts the soldiers and Hawkeye and Chingus Cook jump on the horses and head off. And I can't believe this, but uh, uh, Hawkeye they're riding each Chingus Cook and Hawkeye. Each is one on the the team of horses, and they're going bump and bump and bump and bump. And Ching or uh, Hawkeye takes his muzzle loader pistol and he aims back there and shoots it, shoots it, and somehow manages to hit the hitch, so the team of horses can get disconnected and they go over this way, and the cannon goes down this way and over the cliff and self destructs. So. First off, muzzle loader guns were historically you couldn't yeah. couldn't hit the side of right. a barn. <laughs> you had no idea where that bullet was going to go uh, on that. So anyway, okay. Now that I've uh, completely, I show it's eleven o'clock almost. Yeah, it's uh, ten fifty-eight. So we're going to stop there. Uh, actually, we're going to stop there. And question thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen uh, pertain to your. 
thoughts about this lesson. Next week we're going to start lesson nine, okay. Philippians twelve or not twelve. Yeah, we'd be that'd be interesting. Philippians three, three. twelve through four one. So we'll start there next week. So okay. what? No, we're we're not having session next week, are we? Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, the eleventh, January oh, or uh, okay. July the eleventh. Okay, what is next week? We July fourth. Uh, oh, we we yeah. have the ten program. We're going oh, gosh. we're going to have the uh, patriotic. Ten a.m. I forget it. Ten a.m. Yeah, it. be here at nine thirty. Be here at nine thirty. Yeah. Okay. If you want. I you meant there was going to be an overflow crowd. Yeah. Well, there could be. There have been. Okay. There have been in the past. All right. Well, let's close with a prayer. Then. Okay. Father, thank you for this time. Forgive me for uh, dashing off of the subject sometimes. Help us to uh, learn from these words that we read of Paul in our discussion and put those things into action that were in the uh, uh, optional applications.